Hello, hello, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend. Welcome back to another week of Simply Wall Street's Market Insights. My name is Michael, and this week we'll be going over Pixels to Profits, the changing economics of gaming in 2024. Do you remember that industry we talked about a while back that's in the entertainment space, but it's bigger than Hollywood and the music industry combined? You know, the one with $180 billion in revenue in 2022? Yep, you guessed it. Well, I assume you did. It's the video gaming industry. Given its colossal rise from $20 billion in revenue in 1995 to $180 billion in 2022, it's increasingly getting investor and mainstream attention despite its reality check in 2022. So this week, we are checking in on the industry again after we did a deep dive in September. This time though, we are looking at the key themes and trends to look out for in 2024, how to get exposure if you're enticed by the opportunities, and how to find gems in the industry. Before we dive into what's happened in markets this week though, here's our quote of the week. Education should learn from the positive side of gaming. Reward, accomplishment, and fun. Sebastian Thrun. Now, let's dive into what happened in markets this week. Firstly, Evergrande has been ordered to liquidate by a Hong Kong court, Axios. Our take? Considering the liquidation order was issued by a Hong Kong court, not a jurisdiction in mainland China, where most of its operations are, this will likely be a messy process. Evergrande has liabilities of $300 billion, owed to both local and foreign creditors. Complicating matters further is the fact that China has millions of empty and unsold apartments, so the liquidators can't simply sell off assets to pay off creditors. Not exactly a recipe for investor confidence, and a poor outcome for investors here will likely increase the outflow we're already seeing of foreign investors' capital. Secondly, LVMH's market cap jumped by $46.8 billion on record revenue, CNBC. So what's our take? LVMH's chairman, Bernard Arnault, is now on top of the world's rich list ahead of Elon Musk. Fortunes are usually made by investing in new technologies and innovation, but clearly there are also opportunities in timeless classics like luxury brands owned by LVMH. Remember when we talked about the powers of luxury brands? Thirdly, UK profit warnings in 2023 exceeded the GFC high. Bloomberg. What's our take? The positive side of that is that profit warnings actually fell in the third and fourth quarter. If it's darkest before the dawn, maybe the UK is the place to be bargain hunting. 4. Meta will pay its first ever quarterly dividend of 50 cents per share, The Guardian. What's our take? The dividend, paid to those on record by the 22nd of Feb, alongside the $50 billion buyback program, signals that the company has excess cash to distribute to shareholders after its year of efficiency. Joining the likes of Microsoft and Apple, it appears Meta is in a stage where it can still reinvest heavily for future growth and reward shareholders along the way. And some of the key economic data releases recently. 1. The US Fed kept rates steady, as expected, but also dashed hopes of imminent rate cuts. The latest statement from the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, removed language that had indicated a willingness to keep raising interest rates until inflation had been brought under control. However, the committee also stated that it won't be appropriate to lower rates until it has confidence that inflation is moving towards 2%. 2. US job openings rose to 9.02 million in December, higher than the 8.75 million expected. The implication here is that the job market is slightly hotter than expected. The ADP employment report reflected 107,000 new jobs versus 125,000 expected, with wages up 5.2%. Thirdly, Australia's inflation rate fell to 4.1%. That's a big drop from the prior 5.4% and lower than the 4.3% expected by economists. Good news for anyone hoping for a rate cut, but perhaps not as soon as next week. And before we dive into the piece, here's some food for thought. Analysts at Datatrek Research made an interesting observation about S&P 500 earnings per share estimates, saying, quote, no one believes Wall Street analysts 2024 slash 2025 S&P 500 earnings estimates, and that's okay. Their long history of overestimating results allows markets to haircut those numbers down to realistic expectations. This year's S&P earnings could be about $236 per share, 45% higher than in 2019. The S&P is up 51% since then. Stocks discount earnings and little else. So, this is a great reminder that over long periods of time, and on average, earnings drive share prices. 
Now, let's dive into the video game industry. Recap, the video game industry entering 2024. The video games industry flourished during the pandemic, and it's easy to see why. Everyone was at home, and many didn't have much to do other than play video games for weeks on end. But fortunes turned and the industry then experienced a reality check in 2022. Since then, it's experienced a recovery, although that seems to be stalling for quite a few companies. There are a few reasons for caution, but a correction could also set up some nice opportunities to ride the next wave. This week, we're going to discuss some of the key differences between the various types of gaming companies and some of the latest industry trends. Before we start though, Visual Capitalist recently updated their great infographic illustrating the industry's evolution over the last 50 years. Check out that mobile gaming revenue. The chart is in the article. Now, let's talk about seven types of companies involved in gaming. The first thing to point out is that the video game industry is very diverse. Stock prices tend to correlate at times, but over longer periods of time, they diverge as many companies have very different business models. So, here's a rough breakdown of the types of companies involved. 1. Big Tech Just about all the largest US and Asian tech companies have significant exposure to the gaming industry. In fact, they own some of the best gaming assets. Think Meta with their Quest VR lineup or Microsoft with Xbox. Gaming is just a part of these businesses. And so while video games are another reason to consider owning these quality stocks, they don't offer pure play exposure. 2. Semiconductors Gamers are an important market for several semiconductor manufacturers, and specifically, NVIDIA and AMD. In fact, NVIDIA's meteoric rise all began thanks to their PC gaming hardware. However, like big tech, gaming is just one of several segments, and right now, it's not the most important segment, which is AI. If you want to see how gaming fits into these businesses, take a look at some investors' narratives on the NVIDIA or AMD company report. 3. Game Publishers and Distributors Now that Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard, the pure play video game segment is smaller, but there are still quite a few companies spread out across the globe. These are the companies that own and distribute games played on PCs and consoles, and are the cash cows of the industry. The bigger game companies like Take-Two Interactive own a large portfolio of games which give their cash flows more predictability. Smaller companies like CD Projekt Red own one or two titles, meaning they are high risk, high reward plays. This segment also includes stalwarts like Nintendo and Sony that sell both consoles and games. 4. Platforms and Game Engines one of the really exciting parts of the industry is the companies that provide the tools and platforms used to develop and run games. These companies include Unity Software and Roblox, as well as Epic Games, which owns Fortnite and Unreal Engine. Epic Games is privately owned, but Tencent has a 40% stake in the business. These are the companies at the leading edge of innovation, and if or when we enter the metaverse, they will provide the picks and shovels. However, they also need to make massive investments and therefore profitability might be some time away. 5. Hardware and Peripherals Often overlooked are the companies like Corsair Gaming and Logitech that manufacture gaming hardware from joysticks to keyboards. These businesses may not seem as exciting, but because they are slower growing and often overlooked, they do trade at more attractive valuations from time to time. 6. Esports Competitive video gaming is a new and rapidly growing industry, but from an investor's point of view, the listed companies in this space are tiny and should be treated as highly speculative. 7. Sports betting and casinos Sports betting platforms like DraftKings and even casino owners like Las Vegas Sands are often lumped in with the video gaming stocks. Clearly, these companies have completely different business models and industry dynamics and need to be assessed as such. For a look at some companies in the video gaming industry, take a look at our video games collection for some more ideas. Now, let's talk about the video game outlook for 2024. Sales growth has slowed, but margins have improved. The chart in the article reflects the market cap, revenue, and earnings for the US interactive home entertainment sector, which includes many of the pure play gaming companies. Interestingly, while revenue growth has slowed since early 2022, Earnings growth has accelerated over the last 12 months. So, margins and earnings shot up, likely due to cost cutting, and valuations now appear to be below average. But, for earnings to grow from here, revenues need to increase or margins need to get even better. 
that might only be likely for a select few companies. So the key here is to find those with good future prospects, solid balance sheets, and high returns on invested capital. We'll talk about some more tips later on. Our screener tool can help you narrow down the list of companies that meet your criteria. PC and console games might be weaker. Some analysts think PC and console games are likely to have a weaker year. This is both a function of the high bar set by a strong 2023 and the fact that there are fewer big games scheduled for release. One exception though could be Nintendo, which is rumored to be launching a new Switch console. Ads could play a bigger role in games monetization. PwC's media and entertainment report from June last year includes an interesting forecast. They reckon most of the industry growth over the next few years will be in advertising rather than traditional game purchases. If they are right, this will favor platforms like Meta, Tencent, etc. rather than traditional game publishers. However, PwC goes on to say that there is scope for publishers to explore in-game advertising technology which could serve ads to gamers while making the ads look and feel similar to game content, making it less intrusive. PwC's forecast puts total industry revenue in 2027 at $312 billion, up from $262 billion in 2023. That's an annual growth rate of 4.6%, which is lower than it's been in the past decade. Obviously, some companies will be way ahead of others and others way behind. If advertising is the main growth driver, it's likely to depend on how well ads can be targeted, and that would lean heavily on AI and ad tech capabilities. Virtual reality and the metaverse aren't coming tomorrow. Meta has slowed down its metaverse investments, and Apple's first version of the Vision Pro has clearly been aimed at developers. This is probably a sign that mainstream virtual reality gaming is still some way off. That doesn't mean there aren't a lot of companies investing in the technology to make this a reality, but it does mean that monetization could be quite a few years away and that needs to be incorporated into your valuations. Video gaming ETFs vary widely. As is often the case, ETFs with exposure to video gaming stocks have varying interpretation of what constitutes a video gaming stock. If you look at the ones that have performed best recently, they are probably very heavily weighted to semiconductor and big tech. The Vanek Video Game and Esports ETF is one of the most popular ones in this space, but if you look at its top holdings, it could just as easily be an AI fund. Others like Amplify Video Game Tech ETF and Global X Video Games and Esports ETF are more focused on pure play video gaming stocks, but they both have very different portfolios. These ETFs are a great way to find interesting and obscure gaming stocks listed all over the world. Check out the fun fact sheet for a list of holdings or ETFDB.com, which listed the 15 largest stocks in each fund. So what's the insight? How to find the next gem in gaming. Gaming covers such a breadth of industries, it could be hard to figure out where to look as an investor if you want to get exposure. The tried and tested principles of investing still ring true. Look for businesses that have a durable competitive advantage, minimal leverage, and are run by competent and aligned people. But for those of you who aren't too familiar with video games, here are a few specific insights for the gaming industry to help you navigate your way around. 1. Consider the valuable intellectual properties. The value of intellectual property in the gaming world cannot be understated. Massive game series like Call of Duty, EA Sports, and NBA 2K all bring in billions of dollars in game sales and microtransactions a year, despite their annual game releases being pretty similar. Franchises with loyal fan bases should see consistent sales, even while other games may see a brief moment in the spotlight. Famously, the release of Call of Duty Warzone in 2020 led to a $1.2 billion boost to Activision Blizzard's earnings from microtransactions in just three months. 2. Find out who builds the foundations of the entire industry. Every console generation release comes with the age-old debate, PlayStation or Xbox. However, if you're an AMD investor, the answer is both. Both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X use custom RDNA 2 GPUs from AMD to power their latest consoles. As an investor, it's useful to delve deeper into the supply chain and see who manufactures the hardware that powers the gaming industry. Companies like Nvidia, AMD, ARM Holdings, and TSM build and license the chips that run the entire video game market. Three. Be on the lookout for acquisitions. Like a lot of the tech industry, acquisitions are an easy way for large conglomerates to keep generating growth. 
We've touched on Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard before, but it's only now we're beginning to see the impact of that deal as Microsoft has just reported a 49% increase in Xbox gaming revenue for Q2 of 2024. The most important things in video game publishing are intellectual property and talent, so it's handy to follow the acquisitions to see if any industry cash cows, be it a gaming franchise or a team of developers, make their way to a new parent company. Lastly, let's talk about the key events during next week. This week is all about the balance of trade data, starting with Australia on Monday, where the trade balance is expected to fall to $7.9 billion from a previous $11.4 billion. Germany's trade balance is also out on Monday. It's expected to be $17 billion. On Tuesday, the Royal Bank of Australia is expected to keep rates at 4.3%. Canada's trade balance is out on Wednesday and expected to fall slightly to $1.7 billion. Wrapping up the week, Canada's unemployment rate is out on Friday and is expected to tick up to 6% from 5.8%. Earnings season is broadening out to industrials, pharma, consumer and other sectors. The biggest names reporting this week include McDonald's, Caterpillar, NXPI, Vertex Pharma, Eli Lilly, Toyota, BP, Alibaba, Disney, Uber, S&P Global, Unilever and PepsiCo. That's all for this week's Market Insights. Thank you so much for listening. And until next week, invest well. Simply Wall Street analyst Richard Bowman and Simply Wall Street have no position in any of the companies mentioned. This recording is general in nature. We provide analysis based on historical data and analyst forecasts only using an unbiased methodology and our articles are not intended to be financial advice. It does not constitute a recommendation to buy or sell any stock and does not take into account any of your objectives or your financial situation. We aim to bring you long-term, focused analysis driven by fundamental data. Note that our analysis may not factor in the latest price-sensitive company announcements or qualitative material.